Hi everybody, it's Sandy and it's Friday and that means it's time for a video. Today I'm joining in on the Sparkle Creations blog hop for their third anniversary. Sparkle is one of my friends who is in my stamp group that gets together once a month and I also play bingo with Sparkle once in a while so I get the pleasure of her company and she was going to be in this video but instead she's just going to be right there. Hi everyone, this is Sparkle from Sparkle Creations. I just wanted to let you guys know that this fall we'll be doing a special release for Operation Right Home. My card today celebrates my little sister's big accomplishment and I just wanted to give her a huge shout out in today's video because she has just been made a professor at the University of Bedfordshire in England. Yes, my little sister is going to teach at the university in England. How cool is that? Yay, Debbie! Now hopefully she's not going to see this video before she gets the card in the mail because she is on holiday, they do holidays instead of vacations in the UK. And she's in an undisclosed location somewhere in the Caribbean. So I hope she's being very careful. So I'm using the brand new release called London Charlotte because of course, with my sister being a Londoner, it seemed appropriate. And I'm using my triple and quadruple zero markers. So the RV, the R, the BV, all the ones with three or four zeros after them, and just using a mix of them to make this rainbow sky. I've kind of gotten into this, doing this lately, and I'm really enjoying just playing around with how to blend those colors really softly so they just kind of turn into a really soft glowing sky. I'm going to piece on top of this so it allows me the freedom to just kind of color over in a wash and not really get too stressed out about you know, coloring right up to the edge. This effect would be really hard to get if you were trying to do it right alongside every little piece and not color in certain areas. So it's giving me a lot of freedom. I'm speeding this up to twice the speed because um, yeah, I don't want you to be here all day long. This is already going to be a long enough video coloring this entire card. Even though it's a clean and simple card, it takes a long time to color anyway. Um, I often will do an image in a real short period of time, but then other times it'll take me an hour to color an image. And this one actually was about an hour by the time I got the entire thing um, colored from start to finish. Now the top end of this, um, that where I'm bl blending out that B000, I'm using my colorless blender and just throwing some color on top. And as that dries, that little yellowish color goes away. So no big deal. The buildings, I want to be in the background and I want them to just be a combination of warm grays. So I'm using some um, warm gray 8, some warm gray 6, just going to mush the colors kind of together. It um, doesn't have to be a whole lot of shading and, and, um, and light and all that kind of thing on this because I really want her to pop. I want this to be sort of a gray city in the background. So I'm just blending it out with my C4 marker and just filling it in because that's really all I'm going to end up worrying about um, since I'm going to do the piecing on top later. And I'm just scribbling over top of the area where I've already colored some color. You can start with the light and then add your darks, or you can start with the darks and add your lights, especially when you're doing something this loose. Um, doesn't matter a whole lot either direction. So I'm coloring, just scrubbing over top of it and then a quick wash over that clock. I want the clock to be a little brighter. So I just did a couple strokes over it real quickly. Now I'm going to go back in with a few other colors and just, you know, add some a um, little more depth, a little more blending in places where I can see my marker strokes. And now I'm going to color the one that's going to be pieced. And so I'm starting with my E51. It seems to be my go-to skin tone, my E51, and easy. This is an e E11, but I also do an E95 sometimes. Um, adding my shading with that, blending it out a little bit with the E51 again. And now I'm adding BV01 just to add a little bit of shadow and naturalism to her. I know it's purple, but if you go over top of it like I just did with the E51, it softens it so it doesn't come across looking purple, it just comes across looking like a natural shadow. Now her hair, people have been asking me to do hair, and I know there's not much hair on this because it's a very small image. But I'm going to do black hair and I'm going to do a black purse. So all the things that I'm going to do black, I'm just going to real quickly go in and run, run through with my base purple color. 
uh, this is V25. And the reason that I do a color is so that it's not just black, it's, it has a little more shimmer to it if you add a color beneath it. So this is my C8. You can see my, my <clears throat> marker head needs a little bit of clean off. Got little goobers hanging off of it. <laughs> kind of a mess here. Um, so I'm just adding some, some other really dark areas, just, just splotching in a little bit of color. And now I'm going in with a lighter one, so I'm just going uh, two steps lighter with a C6. And I'll just keep building on the dark areas that I've already placed and stretching those out a little bit further. And then I can go in with an even lighter one, go in with my C4, and just start coloring almost over the entire thing. I want to leave just a tiny bit of the purple. Um, just, just a little bit, doesn't have to be much because I want to go with one lighter color still and just keep going lighter and lighter so that a little bit of that purple shows through. I don't want a ton of it, but it just gives a little bit of a shimmer to the entire piece if I allow that, that little bit of purple to hang, out, hang around there and, and give some life to the image. Her jacket, I want to be a nice bright color because I really want it to pop against that background that I've created behind her. So I'm using FB2. Um, it's one of the neon markers, but it's actually not neon. It's really beautiful. One of my favorite blues. And I'm just going to fill that in, and I'm going to use some B39 for my shadows. So I'm adding just a little bit of shadows. Um, not a whole lot. It doesn't need a huge amount of depth because we're going to get the pop with the color on this one. So I'm just adding a few little spots of the darker color. And then I'll go back in again with my FB2 and just blend that out over top. Just kind of color over, scrub over the whole thing, and it'll just soften that, um, that little bit of a shadow. Looking lovely. And since my sister is an American, I'm going to make this uh, little outfit. She's wearing red, white, and blue. So she's going to wear red tights. And so I'm using an R08 for this. It's more of a little orangey red than some of the other reds. And I don't have to be super careful since I'm going to trim it out and fussy cut it. I can make it whatever um, kind of scribbly I want. And now I'm going to use some R89 for the shadows and create some depth in her little, um, little scarf and on her legs. So the shadow is going to be cast by the jacket hanging down on that. And then the rest of this is going to be cast just as it floats in the wind. I'm going to add a little bit more on her place where it's tied around her neck. Add a little red to the belt and a little bit on her purse just to tie that red color throughout a little bit more. And next up we'll be adding some highlights to her boots. I'm just taking a white pen and adding just a few little spots. Um, add a little bit onto the purse. Make that shine a little bit. And there aren't any buttons. I was kind of looking for buttons there. Give her a little bit of lips here as well. And now I've got my card layered. Um, the piece that I colored before is layered. I added a drop shadow. And I got up my Zyron. So I want to make a sticker out of her. So I'm going to shove her in there. I can kind of bend her around a little bit in order to make her fit inside. I could actually even do it in two pieces. I could cut off the uh, scarf and run her through separately, but I did figure out how to get it to fit. So I just pull it through the Xyron, comes out the other end, uh, tear it off, and pull this thing off the top, this little plastic, and she's a sticker. Now you do have to be careful. There will be some adhesive at times sticking out from underneath this. And this is also a thing where if you don't stick it in the right place, you could be doomed to all kinds of messes. So I'm sitting here trying to get some of that extra excess goober stuff off. Adding a sentiment just in a panel across it, um, letting it stick out a little bit. Now the cloud I wanted to add, because of course, you know, uh, Seattle is cloudy, so is London, so I wanted that cloud to show up and it wasn't showing up, just putting it on the card. So I'm adding just a little bit of B000 onto the bottom of the cloud and I will glue it onto the card. And I've got this little American in London card for my sister. And I just really love how it came out. It's really simple and yet it was a lot of intricate detail to put it together. 
and I know she's gonna love it because she doesn't get nearly enough cards from me. So this one went in the mail to her and I hope she enjoys it quite a bit. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that like button down below. You can hit subscribe down there as well so that YouTube will email you when I have a new video going up. And I also would like you to leave me a comment in the doobly-doo and tell me what you would like to see a picture of me and Sparkle doing at CHA. And I will see if I can make that happen next week because we're both going to be there and we'll see what we can do. And I will see you in the next video. It will probably be some sort of vlog from CHA itself. So stay tuned. I'll see you later. Bye now.